It's story time! Hello and welcome to the Storytime Podcast. This month's Patreon sponsors are Rick Clements, Elizabeth Fraser, and Michael A. Moran. Thank you so much for being a Patreon sponsor and supporting the podcast. Um, if you want to be a Patreon sponsor, the link is down in the description in the show notes on SoundCloud. For those of you on YouTube, I just want to say apologies for the um, construction site in the background here of this intro. Um, I'm moving things around and stuff and I want to point out this massive canvas that has been sent from Rick Clemens as well. So thank you so much Rick, not only are you supporting the podcast by your Patreon, but you sent this amazing canvas that says story time on it and is absolutely enormous uh, for me to hang in the background so that people on YouTube can get a slightly more pleasurable visual experience. Uh, thank you so much. So I just wanted to jump in here and make a quick intro and tell you that in this podcast I talked to Ireland's speed cubing champion which I was, I was so excited to do but the audio failed again and this is the second time the audio has failed on me in a podcast and like arguably audio is the most important thing about a podcast so we did have backup audio from the camera it is not podcast quality but hopefully you'll be able to like deal with it and listen to it um, I am very sorry about it and uh, I desperately, desperately need to upgrade my podcasting setup. Um, I need to get a camera that can record for longer than 12 minutes and I need to get better audio setup. So if you are interested in helping out, there is a link to my Patreon down in the description. I think the first goal I need to get to is $350 so that I can get... Um, I'm looking at a zoom camera which can record for longer than 12 minutes and has much much better audio because it's made by a microphone company uh, so hopefully that like I mean there is I think upwards of 6,000 or 5,000 people in total have listened to this podcast on YouTube alone so if we could get 300 people to donate a dollar um, I'd be there with the patrons that I already have so thank you uh, for those of you that are already patrons and those of you that aren't the link is down in the description and the show notes and soundcloud um, you are under absolutely no obligation to become a patron um, it's just that I really need to give you better quality stuff because I really feel like the Storytime podcast is a good idea and I really try to get interesting stories and different people that you haven't seen or you might not have met um, and I really want to keep it up I just want to give you a better quality version um, so yeah thank you anyway I'll let you get on with the episode and Kieran was as brilliant and um, I really enjoyed this episode and thank you patron sponsors okay bye <laughs> I mean not bye roll the tape hello and welcome to the storytime podcast and this week my name is Claire and this week I have with me Kieran Behan who is the Irish speed cubing champion yep that's and right and record holder and record holder and European champion and European champion <laughs> so with Rubik's Cube speed cubing is doing it really fast for the yeah. simple people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and really fast is a matter of seconds. The fastest I've ever done it in is 4.64 seconds, and my average is around 8 seconds. Okay, that's pretty fast. <laughs> um, so, Kieran is just after finishing a video with me on my main channel where we tried to invent a Rubik's Speed Rubik's Cube challenge. I don't know how, you know, many other people are going to be able to do it, but <laughs> we tried our best. And uh, you, su you successfully completed it yeah. very quickly, uh, blindfolded time. while I was trying to distract him. Um, and so we thought we'd just jump on the podcast though to share some stories because I think that not very many people would have experienced a speed cubing competition. Yeah. And I think that that's really cool. And if you had any stories to share around that kind of side of it, because it's really interesting. Sure, yeah, well... Do you want to quickly shout out your social media before you start? Sure, yeah, you can, you can look me up on my Facebook and Instagram at Kieran Behan. You can also go to my YouTube channel, just at Kieran Behan 2, and you can find a whole more videos of me solving the Rubik's Cube. Yeah, so go check out his channel. The links will be um, down in the description on YouTube and in the show notes on SoundCloud. But yeah, so tell us more about speed cubing competitions. So yeah, nobody really knows about speed cubing. I never heard about it before I before I started it, but it, it is a growing hobby slash sport. There's kind of a bit of controversy, should we call it sport or should we not? But um, I, I would say it's more of a hobby, but it is growing. I think the first time I competed, around 20,000 people had ever competed, maybe less. Okay. And now it's around 60,000. So, so was that 20,000 like worldwide? Worldwide. Holy shit. Yeah, so it, it's it's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but it's 
a decent amount if you look at it by country. But there's so few speed cubers here in Ireland. There is, when I started, my first competition actually was in Ireland, and that's the first competition in Ireland. So I was very lucky as soon as I started, there was a competition there. But I'd say around less than 20 people in Ireland were speed cubing. Yes. And I mean, a lot of those stopped because there wasn't really any infrastructure to go and compete. But I've been very lucky to have parents who fly me to England for for the past five years to go and compete. Wow. So and that kind of kept me in touch with the with the hobby and I've just been getting faster and faster. And recently I started organising my own competitions here in Ireland. And I've organised two so far, the Irish Championships 2015 and 2016. And I'm in the middle of organising Irish Championships 2017. Organising the Irish Championships? Yeah. Jesus. It, it's not a huge event because the first year I, I think around 25 or so people went. And then in 2016 around 60 people went. So and so far we have around 40, 45 people registered for this year's, which will be on June 24th and 25th. Wow. So how does it work? Like how how does competing work? All right. So you you kind of have a schedule, and you see a competition could be either one day, two days, or three days. Um. And what would happen is because there's so many different events, like this one here, there's different types of Rubik's cubes. We have to fit all of them into one weekend okay. for competing. And say if there's 50 people competing, then we have to we have to make a schedule beforehand, and hopefully how many people will be competing in each event. And then we have to make scorecards, and we get we have to get scramblers and judges. So wow. what would happen is so sorry just to um, explain some of the lingo there mm. for the people on the time are not watching on YouTube. You meant you said different yeah. types of Rubik's cubes, and you showed you've got a you've got. Yeah, different sizes. I've, I've, of the I've got Rubik's different cubes. sizes. So the original Rubik's cube, the one that everybody knows, has three stickers going across and three stickers going down. There's a whole bunch of different Rubik's cubes. Like there's two stickers going across and two stickers going down, and then all the way up to seven by seven. And yeah, there's also you can do it one-handed in competition, blindfolded with feet in competition. With your feet. With my feet. Oh yeah. my God. Now, I don't. I compete in feet because it's just an extra event to compete in, but I absolutely hate the event because it's disgusting. <laughs> I, I don't think you should be allowed to put your foot on something so beautiful. <laughs> well, like, wow, well, I didn't think that's it. I thought you were just they, please tell me they all use different Rubik's Cubes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. you just now, made your own. <laughs> one, one of the worst jobs at a Rubik's Cube competition will be Scrambler for feet. So, so what's the scrambler? You have to mix up the Rubik's So yet? what happens is a delegate will go to each competition and they provide scrambles because we can't just give people random states because then one might have an advantage over the other. So what happens is we print out a specific set of scrambles so everybody gets the exact same scrambled state. Oh, that makes so much sense. I never ever thought of that before. Yeah. So it's not totally random. Someone just doesn't like I did to you earlier. They, they don't just mix it up and hand it no, to you. No. So everybody gets the everybody gets the exact same way. Yeah. And then they it's about who can do it the fastest. So they're all on the same. Right. So they're all right. starting on the same playing field. Okay, but a scrambler for the Rubik's cube feet yeah. competition has to come in well, and touch people's Rubik's cube. They've obviously practiced with their feet on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, you see, if people don't. We don't have like specific jobs. Well, oh, you have to do this. You have to do this. People volunteer. Okay. And they volunteer for scrambling all the different events. So, but we need somebody to volunteer for feet, but nobody ever will. <laughs> so, and I don't blame them. But, yes, so the person who's, uh, I mean, the people who usually end up scrambling it are the people who are competing in it in a different group. So okay. we have different groups. And the people who are not in that group scramble for people that are in, say, group one. And the people after group one's finished, the people who are in group one scramble for people in group two. Okay, so they, it's people who are very good at the it's competitors, is it? Yeah. Because like, yeah. I was thinking, was like, someone like me it would take me forever to figure yeah. out the, the and sheet. And, and also, if group. you're in different groups, the the scrambles for group one are different to the scrambles in group two. Yeah, because so if you, people in group two scramble for group one, then they'll They have it. a natural yeah. advantage. Jesus, this is very thought out, isn't it? Well, yeah, the World Cube Association was founded in 2003. I mean, the first competition was in 1982. And then there was a long pause of 21 years until the World Championships in 2003. And then just it just blew up from there. I mean, in 14 years, I think there's 
10 competitions per week, roughly, or maybe 5 to 10 competitions per week all over the world. Oh my god. So yeah, it's really blown up. So yeah, you have competed in feet before you were saying, before I stopped you, just saying all the lingo about scramblers. <laughs> yeah, I've competed in feet, uh, shamefully. <laughs> no shame, no but, shame. Um, I think my personal best is like 49 seconds. With your feet? With my feet. Well, because like, I imagine it's quite difficult to hear your feet. Well, See, yeah, I couldn't get 49 pretty, seconds with my hands and my two eyes and full capacity. <laughs> you pretty much just use your big toes. That, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm not going to show you, I'm not taking No, it's alright. The not, internet I'm doesn't show me, but I'm good. Yeah, sure, you can, you can look it up on YouTube or whatever, because I'm not showing you. <laughs> do you know what I really want to see on YouTube? Is like, do you know the way there's these massive channels? Like, there's one, uh, one of my favourites is uh, What's Inside, and they just cut things in half. And then another one is the, um, the Hydraulic Press channel, where they just crush things with a hydraulic press. I oh, want to see someone... Oh, there's some with, like, the, the guy with the hot knife. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I think he started the hot knife challenge. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, I haven't heard of those channels, but I've seen a few of the hot knife, and he, he did actually do one with the Rubik's cube. Oh, did he? Yeah. But what I want to see, well, uh, actually, yeah, the what's inside guy would be good to cut open a Rubik's cube. Actually, that would make sense. Um, but what I'd like to see is like a channel of someone who's just massive on YouTube and they speed cube. Because I met a guy uh, five years ago, I think, at BigCon who speed cubes and on his YouTube channel, really? and I ever since I've been totally fascinated. Do you remember with his it? name? I do not, no, but it's Rubik's guy is his username. I don't know, but there are actually YouTubers who are cubers. So I think the biggest YouTube cuber is Spanish, so I can't understand them. <laughs> but he's got, he's actually got over a million subs. No so way! Yeah, I mean, and he's, he's almost double the amount of subs that any other cuber has, but I think the, the most sub English speaking would probably be around 400. Jesus, that's, well, that's a lot bigger than I thought, and I really want to subscribe yeah, to these and, people now. And the so. world champion has, I think, 175,000. Wow. So, okay, yeah. so do you know the links to these people? Yeah, I can right. give you You give them yeah. to me, and I'll put them down in the description and in the show notes and thank you, and then I can go subscribe to them. Because I just really, I'm fascinated by the videos. And go subscribe you know to me, too. And also subscribe <laughs> to me. Yeah, you can see videos of me solving the Rubik's Cube. Yes, you can be the next I, I, big I, biggest English-speaking speed cuber on YouTube. <laughs> and I actually caught my fastest ever Rubik's Cube solve 4.64 seconds on camera. Oh, brilliant. And I, it's on my channel. But well, surely then, is that, a, like, is that a Guinness World Record or close to it? Can you use no. that video to prove it? No, well, really, the Guinness World Record book, uh, the only records that are put in there are the ones from competitions, because they're the official ones. Fair enough. The body. That makes sense. But there's loads of people who do a home that have gotten faster solves than the one in competition. Uh, 4.64 seconds, my personal best, is faster than the one in competition of 4.73, and that's the world record. Yeah, wow. But I think the world record at home is like 3.5 seconds. In Ireland, like? No, at the whole world. Oh, wow. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes, at home. I get what you mean. Yeah, and so they're like just practicing, yeah. like, training. So people keep track of how, how they do in training, and technically, that's faster or whatever, because the pressure yeah. is probably not on. Yeah, I mean, what a lot of people try and do is that when they're at home, pretend they're in a competition, and when they're in a competition, pretend they're at home. Oh, that makes they're just sense. To, yeah. Just to try and like relieve the pressure. That's what I do anyway. And that, that kind of helps, but when I get into a big final, I mean, just looking at all the people in front of me, it's like I can't think about the fact that I'm at home. I'm just in front of a couple hundred people, and my hands start to shake. Yeah. And that makes it really bad. You know, with football or something, if you're nervous, as soon as you get out there, as soon as the whistle ball, as soon as the ball's thrown up, your nerves are gone. You're just playing. Yeah, you're kind of just focused yeah. on playing. Yeah. It, it's not like that with the Rubik's Cube. When you get nervous, your hands start to shake. And, and it affects how you do it. It really does affect it. And yeah, it's happened a few times, but whenever whenever you're in finals, it's when it gets really nervous. That, yeah, Jesus. So how do you do it? But, um, and then, so, like, what kind of, have you any, what's maybe your best story from competition or your best okay. experience? I'd say there's a bit of backstory behind this one, but the event it was in was seven by seven. Okay. So seven stickers yeah. seven stickers across. And this was two, 2014, so three years ago. I was just 14 years old. And seven by seven was really my main event. It's the one I practiced the most. It's the one I had the highest world ranking in. And I think I started off the year with a four minute and 16 seconds off okay. uh, officially. And Throughout the year, I think I got my all-time official PB single in competition, and that was in May. What's P? Personal, oh, personal best, best, sorry. Personal best, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> personal best, PB. 
and that was 3 minutes and 28 seconds in May. So I, I jumped from the start of the year with 4 minutes and 16 seconds to 3 minutes and 28 seconds. Oh, did you shave nearly a minute, well? Wow. Well, half a minute. Half a minute, yeah. yeah. I'm not math either. <laughs> but, but then in August, I got my all-time PB again on 7x7 seven seven with 3 minutes and 12 seconds. Oh, wow, okay. And that's over a minute faster, but that was in August, so that's like 9 months after the start of the year. And then UK Championships 2014, I went to, and my all-time PB single at home at that point was 3 minutes and 10 seconds. And I think my all-time PB in the competition put me around 20th in the world, 25th, around there. And what I've done is, I, I've done my first off, and that went, I, th I had a pop, so pieces came out, the thing broke, and I had to put it back together. Oh no! So it was like 30 seconds behind what I'd usually get. And I was like, oh, this is a disaster. I mean, what am I supposed to do now? And then my next off, I got 2 minutes and 54 seconds. Oh my god! My all time PB by 16 seconds on my main event that I've been practicing for the whole year. And that put me 10th in the world by 0 0.01 seconds. Jay. And I just went ballistic. I, di I didn't know how to react because this is something I've, I've been working for for a year or, or two. I mean, that was my main event for the entire year. And the fact that I started with a 4.16 and ended with a 2.54 it was just, and top 10 in the world by 0 0.01 seconds. I, I just screamed and then fell. <laughs> no way! Yeah, I, I, so I, did I, they I, tell I, you on the, like, after you finish it immediately, did they immediately tell you how quick it was? No, actually... Or do you have to wait? Like, so I, my question is, you were on stage here. and then you just screamed. This is called a timer, okay? Okay. And for the people who are watching on SoundCloud, it's it's just like, kind of like a pad where you have two places where I you put it looks like hands. a computer game controller. In a way, yeah, you can see... With the pl yeah, it's got, in the middle it's got a couple of buttons and then on each end it's got two places to put your hands. Yeah, so what happens, I'll try and explain this to people on SoundCloud first because it's kind of hard, but you have two places where you can put your hands and you put it down and as soon as that, a green light then comes on okay. and then when you take it off, the time starts. Ah. So you, you dance all the Rubik's Cube and then you put your two hands back onto the, the two places for your hands and that gives you the time. Ah, so this thing is in front of you while you're making it and you have yeah. to stop the time of your set. It's no, nobody's with it. I assume somebody would be sitting there with a stopwatch. Well, no, yeah, they are. Because what you get is you get 15 seconds to look at it beforehand. And what the judge do, does is they tell you when it's 8 seconds, they tell you when it's 12 seconds, and then you have to go. So if you inspect for over 15 seconds... It gets taken off your time, does it? Well, you get two seconds added to your time if you go for 17 seconds, and then after 17 seconds, it's just DNF. You're not allowed to do this all because DNF it did not finish. No way. Okay. Well, technically DNF because it did not solve. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so what would happen then is you'd have the Rubik's cube mixed up, and you would put cube down, two hands on the timer, and then start solving. So I'll just solve it here. So that is insane! 8.34. 8 oh my god, 8 seconds. So that's how you tell what time you get in competition, is you, you practically time it yourself. Yeah, and for people thinking, oh my god, you just said you must be number one of the room. Yeah, that was a 3 by 3 not a yeah. 6. Oh no. Or 7 is your... your 7 by 7 was my main event, it's yeah. not 6 by 6, no, it's a European champion at that. Okay, perfect. Uh, god, that's so fast, that's insane. <laughs> that re that's really cool, that thing. Yeah, well, you, you get... In competitions, there'd be maybe 10 or 12 of these, and there'd be separate tables. So you'd have a waiting area at the back, and then while the scrambler is scrambling your cube, then as a judge would then pick up the cube, call your name out, then you go to the table, you get one of these, and then you get your inspection time, you start it, you solve it, you stop it. They write the time down on a score sheet, and you sign it, and then you go back and then you wait for your next So I have two questions. My first question is, how do you have one of those? You can buy them online, actually. Oh, you can? Yeah. And they're, they're like, they're the right ones or whatever. Yeah, but these are technically the ones for competitions in Ireland. So, whenever, I'm the only person who organizes competitions in Ireland, so I need equipment so I can then have competitions in Ireland. Yeah, so that makes I, I, I have 10 of these, I think, or around 10. And, yeah, so when Irish Championships comes around in the end of June, I'll have 10 of these and then there'll be 10 stations. 
Okay. And then my second question was, so at what point did you start screaming? <laughs> oh, right, yeah. So just imagine this is a 7. I actually think I have a 7. Yeah, I do. I have a 7 by 7 with me. So I, I kind of knew like a few seconds. Because I know when I'm going to finish. Because for three minutes, I know when I'm coming to the end. So, but when you look at the timer, you get nervous. Because if you're like at a specific point, but faster at that point, then you'd be on a normal solve. Then you start to get nervous and your hands start to shake because and you realize it, it could be a good stop. Speed, yeah. And then that would respect. Um, so do you try not to look at the timer? I didn't, while I didn't you're look talking. at the timer for my 2 minute and 54 seconds off because I knew for a fact that it was a good stop. Because just like just the feel of the solve, just you know it's fast and you know it's faster than normal. So I just I just banked it out because it's on a table. I kind of looked down and just at my cube and didn't look up. So what happens? was as this is what I was left with at the end and I just like I was around here when I looked at the timer three moves away from finishing it and I'm like oh shit <laughs> and then I just started screaming and, <laughs> just and, then, I, yeah, and then I knocked, I knocked the chair over I fell on the ground I think I hooked like 10 or 15 people afterwards and <laughs> what were your parents like? Were your parents there? oh my dad wasn't actually there he, it was in Leicester in the UK which is where the UK championships were that year and my mom go, my mom's amazing she goes to, with me to all these competitions and she just she's the one filming this all and she, when I reacted when I screamed and when I fell over she didn't know how to react, so she just like tried to zoom it out, but she didn't actually get. Because she was going crazy too, because she know how she knew how happy. So I your video was probably like real calm, and then it's like oh! Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And then, and then like some people in the room start clapping because there's a good 100, 150 people in that room. I said maybe 100, and yeah, just everybody started clapping because the fastest time that anybody in that room had ever solved the seven by seven was me. The three minutes and twelve seconds in competition, and, you and then when people done. saw two minutes fifty four. And, and me screaming and me falling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, they started to clap. So, I uh, just, that's just by far my favourite moment in the competition. I wouldn't say by far because getting the European record was probably. Pretty cool. Yeah, and the European champion after that is probably my third favourite time in the competition. Yeah, but making the top 10 in the world is. is For the first time, yeah, too. Wow. When beating my all time personal best by 16 seconds and getting into the top 10 in the world by 0 0.01 seconds. And at an event that I've been working for a year at, I just, I lost it. And uh, so, have you bet that again since? Or? Yeah, yeah, because that was three years ago. It took me a while to beat that 254, because it's my all-time PB by 16 seconds. It took me a while to catch up to it. But at the UK Championships the next year, I got a 2 minute and 50 seconds off. And then at last year's UK Championships, I got, I think I got 2 minute and 46. So what... Where does that leave you now in the ranking? I think because people beat the 2 minute 54, I think I'm around like 14th, 15th. Still, that is amazing yeah. in the world. Yeah. And the, the highest I've ever climbed is third, which is the, third. The, the the European record I got, obviously first in the country, first in Europe, and that was third in the world. So that's the, I mean... And what one was that for? That this was, was the 6x6. That was this the 6x6. Is, this is the only one I've ever held the European record at. And yeah, that put me third in the world, so I also screamed. And I also almost fell over, <laughs> but I, I didn't fall over. And that one, um, was that less than the seven? I'm assuming yeah. because it has. Yeah, it took it took less time seven. because there's less pieces. I think the average time that the European record was was one minute and fifty seven seconds. For the six point six, yeah. yeah. So that's roughly like a minute faster. But that put me third in the world, and I was really happy with that. Wow. So what was what was this? Sorry, what was the time on that one again? To oh, this one, one, yeah? one minute and fifty-seven seconds was the average. My best was one minute and fifty-five. My worst was one minute and fifty-nine, and that put it at one minute and fifty-seven seconds. Is your average. average? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was oh, my sorry, average. I thought you at the meant time. like the worldwide average. <laughs> no, <laughs> the, wor the world <laughs> record was one minute and fifty-one seconds, I think, and at the time, so I was six seconds up around. So I was I was getting close, and I was trying to think about the world record maybe, but um. Then it just fell out at six by six and it got really bad. Yeah. Because I mean I'd gotten the European record and I didn't think I could get a world record, so I kinda I focused on other events basically and it wasn't until the lead up to European Championships last year which was like, okay, maybe I should start taking this seriously again. Then I got a woman in a fifty one second average in the European Championships final 
which made me the European champion. But the world record at that point was like 1 minute and 43. So the 6x6 six six is now what you're focusing on? Yes, is? yeah. Um, I'm mainly focusing on 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, 6x6 and 7x7. They're, they're the main... That's a lot of Ruby. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of Ruby. Juice. So 3x3 three three, all the way up to 7x7. Seven seven, yeah, them yeah. all really. <laughs> yeah. Or is there more? Like, oh no, there's a lot more. There's the 12-sided one I showed you in the main channel video. Yes, yeah, so people actually compete in that one. There's yeah. this, he showed me a 12 sided one, which is like, um, again, for the people not watching on YouTube, it, uh, it's not square. It's um, dodecahedron. It's a dodecahedron. There you go. Um, yeah, that looks absolutely impossible to. So people compete in that one as well? Yeah, and there's um, Pyraminx 2, which is more of a triangular based Rubik's Cube, and then there's. You can also do 4x4 four four and 5x5 five five blindfolded. And you can do a Rubik's Cube multi-blind. So, multi-blind? Yeah, so you memorize like three or four Rubik's Cubes and then put them blindfolded on. And, and you have to figure them out. out. Well, you, 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 you can't actually take off your blindfold between cubes. So you have to figure out which one is... Do like, Or do they do they put three in front of you, say, and don't mix them up while well, you're blindfolded? Well, you get to choose how many you, you go for. Yeah. So say if I were to go for three, then I'd put the three in front of me, then I'd memorize this one, memorize the next one, memorize the third put the blindfold on, then solve this one, solve the second, yeah. solve the second. So, uh, yeah, I think I was confused with a magic trick. I was like, once you <laughs> blindfold, did they mix them around and you have to get them? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> they don't do that. Yeah, that's, it doesn't make sense. And the world, record, it, the world record is 41 in an hour. 41? 50, 54 minutes, 41. Jesus. That's insane. I'm like, not that good at anything. It's just mind-blowing to think people are that good at well, something that takes that I feel take quite a lot of intelligence to figure that out. Like I uh, find it very difficult. You don't have to be cubes. smart to solve Rubik's. You could learn how to solve a Rubik's cube if you wanted in a week. I mean, if you learn how to solve a Rubik's cube, you could delete the I am average video from the channel because, <laughs> because you would be able to solve a Rubik's cube. But um, I think it took me a month. And that's because I was procrastinating so much. And did you? How did you learn? Did like YouTube tutorial? YouTube tutorial, or? yeah. YouTube tutorial. There's. I think I learned from a guy called Pogo Bat. He had a Rubik's Cube tutorial, and yeah, I, I just learned from that. And he just showed me, and I just. It's kind of like learning a piano, or learning how to play a piano, or just learning anything. It's just once you know the, the technique and the method, you can do it every time. That is really interesting. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast no and sharing your stories. I love getting people out of a, a real unique story to tell, because yeah, I feel like. Because not many people. Do this. Yeah. <laughs> but more people should. Definitely. So if if you can solve a Rubik's Cube, then go to the Irish Rubik's Cube Championships next month. I mean there's nothing stopping you. It doesn't matter what your age is, what your speed is. Just if you can solve a Rubik's Cube, you should go to the Rubik's Cube Championships. Yeah, and even if you're if you're not ready to compete but you're interested, go to watch. Can they people go to watch? Uh we don't have strict rules on people watching, but we prefer because it's so expensive to get a venue that we don't want it to get overcrowded. Yeah, you wouldn't so, want too many. Yeah, because then. I actually use my school, my, my school hall, and that could probably fit a 100 person competition. That's cool that your school lets you use yeah, it. Yeah, they let me yeah. use it, and, but if there's like four or 500 people coming up just to watch. I mean, That's fair fun. enough, yeah. So, uh, we so if, but if you can solve a Rubik's Cube and you want to you enter, get in touch about entering. Yeah, you can. I'll, if you I'll want give to you the link. Uh, the links will be in description. the description and in the show notes. But yeah, so does your um, championship have like a Facebook page or anything? Or it has a website. Okay. Um, you can go onto the World Cube Association org and you can see our championships listed on it, and then you can register. Oh, awesome. And then the competition has its own specific website. And if you have any questions, you can email speedcubeinireland.gmail.com. Speedcubeinireland at gmail dot com. And then you're Kieran Behan on Facebook and Instagram as yeah. well. And YouTube. And YouTube. And Snapchat at CW and if you want to add that too. <laughs> All the things that we have in the description. Thank you so much for coming in and chatting with us no today. Problem. And uh, yeah, thank you to this episode's uh, Patreon sponsor. And thanks again to Buddha Bag for the bean bags. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. No problem.